welcome back to my channel. We are doing another episode of Ikea hacks. Now I have done a ton of Ikea hacks videos in the past on my channel and I personally just love flipping Ikea pieces because I do feel like Ikea pieces are pretty simple to start and I mean I feel like that is the basis of Ikea. It's very Swedish style design and it also comes at a great price point so a lot of the pieces are more minimal. But for someone like me who likes a more maximal approach to design I love taking these pieces and just hacking them and reworking them into really cute decor and I have three incredible projects for you guys to Today. Normally I do four in my IKEA hacks, but these three projects literally shined so bright on their own. I was like, these have to just go in their own video. We're doing a decor piece, a rug, and a actual coffee table. My camera is literally on top of the coffee table right now, and it's perfect. It is literally perfect, you guys. And it's actually the first time I've used this technique, so I'm excited for you guys to see it. But without further ado, we have some projects to jump into. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you are not already, and you're following me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home for your daily dose of DIY and Drew and let's go ahead and dive on into these projects. Our first project here features a wooden bowl and I personally love these wooden bowls. I have a ton of them in different sizes. They're great mixing bowls for your kitchen space, but I actually wanna take this and turn it more into a decorative style bowl. So something that you can use on a styled shelf or on a coffee table or an entryway table. And this is the perfect base for that and it turned out incredible. So here's how I did it. For this first project, I'm going to be using a bamboo serving bowl from Ikea, and I'm starting off by using a flexible ruler here, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark one inch distances apart so that we know where to drill our holes at the top of our bowl here. Now, I literally put my dots directly on the line in the bamboo, and then I just measured them out one inch all the way around. Next, what I did was I went in with a drill bit that was wide enough to fit my leather cording, and I'm going to be drilling through every single one of those holes that we created. Now, do keep in mind that this is a bowl shape, so it's kind of hard to keep stable. That's why I had it on my lap, then I moved it to the table, but just whatever you feel comfortable with. And I did go ahead and mess up on one of the sections, but if you guys mess up, do not worry. Just fill the hole with some wood filler, sand it down, and you're good to go. So I just let that dry, and then I sanded down all the excess wood filler. brought the piece outside for spray paint time. And I wanted to go ahead and give this bowl a new look, completely different from the original bamboo. So I gave two coats of a satin black spray paint, but if you do like the original wood, you can totally keep that. But because I was using this kind of orangey hued suede cording, I did want the contrast to be pretty bold and I loved the way that the black looked with that. So all I did was cut a long piece of our suede cording and I'm just simply lacing it through the top here by going out through the front side and in through the back side. And it kind of creates a diagonal lace, which I love. And I repeated this process around around the entire rim of the bowl. Simply tie a knot on the inside of your bowl once you are done and then snip that cording as close to the knot as possible and that finishes off your decorative bowl. For our second project, I wanted to go ahead and do another rug for you guys. I've done rugs in the past from Ikea and you guys always love them. And just coming up with the design is always the fun part. So today I wanted to do a more oblong kind of Killam style checkerboard pattern, which I feel like I've been seeing trending across Pinterest and social media lately in terms of interior design. So this one's super simple, very affordable and easy to recreate. So here's how I did this project. For our second project, I'm going to be using the Raklev Woven Rug from Ikea. And as you can see here, it has bands of color across the center section of this. Now they do have a rug, I believe that's called Low Howls, which is essentially the same rug without the bands of color, but it was out of stock at my Ikea. So I opted to grab this one and then I just removed all of those bands of color. Super simple and easy. Just cut the ropes as you go and pull them out because I'm going to want to be creating a new runner rug based off of this vintage style Killam rug, which I have been loving lately. I love this kind of geometric pattern and we're gonna achieve that with some tape. So all I'm doing is cutting my tape into three varying widths. I really like when the widths of your blocked sections are a little bit different. So my left one was actually the smallest, my middle one was a bit wider, and then the right one was just a bit smaller than the middle. So the next process is pretty repetitive. You're just going to be cutting out tape and repeating the checkerboard pattern all the way up your entire rug. And then once you have all of your tape added on there, you can actually bring it outside and use your favorite spray paint to go over the top of your rug. I started off with this ivory color because I really wanted a subtle tone on tone look for this rug. I know the one I shared with you guys was pretty bold, but I just thought a tone on tone would be really pretty for this rug. And I had so much hope until I started removing the tape. It's gonna be subtle. Does it show up on camera? A little. Should I redo it with black? I think I would. And that is just what I did. I actually went ahead and recovered those sections that I pulled off and then I brought the piece back outside because it was just way too tone on tone. I really could not tell a difference at all in that checkerboard. So I went back and gave a full coat of black spray paint onto our entire rug and then brought it back inside. 
Oh, that looks oh, better. Oh, that's so much better. And I'm sure you guys know how this project ends. It's the most satisfying part of removing all of the tape. I absolutely love this process. And you get to reveal your brand new rug. And this is perfect actually to use indoors or outdoors. And it is time for the third and final project, which is our larger scale project in today's video. I am making a coffee table. Now, as you guys know, in my living room, I've had the same kind of wicker style coffee table that I spray painted in my living room makeover, but I've always wanted to swap this out because it is in the smaller side. And I found the LAC coffee table at Ikea, which is only $29. I believe it's one of the most inexpensive coffee tables they sell. And it really is a great shape and size for my living room. So I was like, let's go ahead and flip this, add some plaster to it and turn it into what could be a $600 coffee table for literally a little bit under $60. And of course, you guys know that I had to save my favorite project for last. This is our LAC coffee table hack. And I started off by firstly assembling the entire LAC coffee table, which was very simple. You just have to screw the legs in and then go ahead and add that middle shelf. It took like 10 minutes to construct. Very, very simple. And you guys, this coffee table is only $29. So it's the perfect base for this project. So this is what the table looks like once it's constructed. And our next process is actually to cover the entire table in some mesh drywall tape. So you're going to want to cover every single piece that you are adding plastic or two, which is essentially the entire table for me, I'm going to be covering that in mesh drywall tape. And this right here is what your tabletop should look like once you have it fully covered with our mesh tape. I also added it, of course, to the sides. Now we're gonna wanna go ahead and mix up our plaster of Paris. So this comes in a box like this, only $4. Now, sadly, Milo's only had small boxes, but you can get bigger bags. What you're gonna wanna do is actually add it into a bucket with a little bit of water and mix it up until you have a nice, smooth, kind of like chunky oatmeal-esque consistency. You're just gonna want something more on the wet side than the dry side because this product does dry very quickly. That is something I wanna tell you guys for sure. I went ahead and I used a spackle tool like this, which is essentially just a spreader for, you know, joint compound or spackling. And I spread it first off on the top of our table. I wanted to go ahead and work in a large area so I can get a feel for the actual plastering. And it really is a simple process, but I do suggest that you make more batches of plaster and work longer than trying to plaster it all at once with what you have, because the plaster really does dry in about 10 minutes or so. And it's really not workable as it gets harder. So I suggest making smaller batches and work with it so you can smooth it out with the spackling tool. But if you do want a more smoother plaster finish on top, you can go in after about 10 minutes of the plaster drying on your surface with a damp sponge and just go over the top of the surface. It's actually really going to smooth down that plaster and kind of remove any harsh edges if there are any. And you can really smooth it down as much as you would like to just go over it multiple times with the sponge. I made some fresh plaster when I went ahead and did the sides and really all you're going to want to make sure that you do when you do the sides is that you also get that very, very corner of the side so that it transfers to the top so it looks like one cohesive piece. So when I did the legs and the sides, I just ensured that I was getting all of the sides. And I, as you can see here, I did go in with my hand at one point because it was just taking quite a while. but. It is a fun process, I'm not gonna lie. It is a extremely messy process though, I will tell you guys that. But once you have all the plaster smeared on your piece, this is what my workstation ended up looking like. The following morning, I whipped up a smaller batch of plaster just to kind of fill in any areas where I felt like I either wanted more texture or I was still able to see that mesh underneath or I just wanted to add more in general. I also went in and used some fine grit sandpaper. This is 180 grit to just go in and smooth out any areas in the plaster that of course needed a little bit more smoothing as well. I made sure to do all of the legs just to ensure they were nice and clean when I added it to my living room. It was going to look nice. And this is what the final state of the table looked like, which was perfect. But of course, we do need to go in and just give it a protective finish. So I got a matte clear coat. This is the perfect option. I'll link this one below for you guys. It's great for a plaster project like this because it does dry fully clear. So I went around and I gave two full coats of this. Just wait about four or five hours between coats. So I did one coat, then I went back and did the second. And then once you are done with that, just let your table cure for about 24 hours and you are completely done.
A little update on the table, you guys. I actually filmed this about a week and a half ago, so I've been living with the table for, I'd probably say, 10 days or so, and I absolutely am obsessed with it. Not one thing has chipped. I really wanted to do like a little bit of an update for you guys because I knew I was putting the plaster over the top of like that Ikea finish and I wasn't sure if it was going to stick properly but it looks incredible. It's really nice to just kind of randomly and sporadically place items. I think it looks really fun and I feel like overall just this table is just a unique piece. I love the texture on the corners. Um, I also love how it has this bottom shelf as well. I added these ceramic beads which normally had a couple books over there but I totally Totally forgot that I put them up there but that's the table I just wanted to give you guys a quick little vlog style update to let you guys know that it is going strong plan on keeping it here the other table is actually already out and I just love this I want to get a new rug for this space so if you guys have any recommendations that will go with this table and this chair please please let me know in the comment section below those were my Ikea hacks for you today I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you guys like more Ikea hacks I have so many more of them on my channel I will link a couple more in the description box below for you guys and also make sure to subscribe because I I'm always posting brand new videos here on Lone Fox. I post almost every single Thursday and Sunday, so make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon if you are not already. And I would love to know which project was your guys' favorite. Was it the bowl? Was it the rug? Or was it the coffee table? There are some options, but they all turned out really cute, and I hope that you guys loved this one. The website, LoneFox.com, is finally fixed. It was down for like a month, so if you want to go ahead and get some new decor or just shop around on the site, it's finally up and running, you guys, and everything is functioning properly. I'll catch you guys in my next next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys.